you might start with, and it certainly feels qualitatively, that, uh, that what's going on in the United States and what's been going on with the Federal Reserve has had a big impact on global asset markets, including Asia. Um, and, you know, so it feels like that, but is it true? How do we evaluate that? Well, this is my favorite illustration. It shows on the vertical axis the performance of uh, the HSBC local, Asia local bond index. Um, and on the horizontal axis, the, uh, the change in yield in treasuries from the day before. So what happens in Asia on Thursday versus what happened in the United States on Wednesday. So there's no question about the direction of causality. And you can see that prior to May, there was essentially no relationship between these two things. Since May, um, uh, the, the, you, see a, you see visually a distinct correlation. On average, a 10 basis point increase in Treasury yields produced a decline in Asian bonds of about three quarters of a percent. That's combining the yield and the, and the foreign currency uh, dimensions of it. And about, in total, about 44% of the variation of daily movements in Asian local bonds was correlated to what happened in U.S. Treasuries on the previous day. Norway is not a day trading fund. It is a long-term asset allocator. And, you know, what is very public in the case of Norway is also true among sovereign wealth funds that are less public. That is, that there is an effort to diversify their uh, their uh, uh, portfolios into emerging markets. And one important reason for that is the starting point of those portfolios is very low allocations to emerging markets. So if we look at the weight of emerging market uh, markets in the global economy as expressed either as a share of global GDP, uh, which is almost 40 percent, that's in market in current exchange rates, not PPP adjusted exchange rates, almost 40 percent. Emerging markets accounted for more than 100 percent of global growth last year, but represent less than, well less than 10 percent of, of fixed income investments. Here it's for U.S. mutual fund investors, but the same analysis would hold true looking at other global investors. Emerging markets represent less than 5 percent of the Barclays Global Aggregate Index, which is, the, you know, the most widely followed global bond index. So this starting point explains why we have had what we view as strategic reallocations from developed country assets into emerging markets, and one reason why we think that that is likely to continue. Now, that is, does not mean uh, that, uh, that emerging markets will be immune from volatility. I mentioned, you know, the first reason they'll be subject to volatility is because of changing expectations about Federal Reserve policy. They will also be subject to volatility because there are differences among emerging markets in their level of, of uh, financial vulnerability. So on this uh, chart you see, and it's probably hard to read from your, um, from your seats, but may, some of you may have copies of this presentation, um, a, uh, various Asian countries and the, uh, the uh, loss of or change in foreign reserves during various episodes of financial market volatility. So 1997, very large decreases in reserves on the order of 30 percent and above for countries that were strongly affected. 2008, again, some very large losses of reserves. Um, 2011 and then the most recent episode. And what you see in the most recent episode is in general the reserve losses were very small. A lot of volatility. I mean, Treasuries went from 1.6 percent yield to three. Um, a very big move in international financial markets, a muted impact on reserves, with the exception of a couple of countries that we all know the names of, India and Indonesia, which experienced larger um, pressure on, on their reserves. This idea of emerging markets being the beneficiaries of continued strategic reallocations doesn't overcome the fact that different emerging market countries have different levels of financial vulnerability to the short-term volatility in financial markets that could be induced by changing expectations of Fed policy. Well, I think that a lot of the answer to that question depends upon your time horizon and your um, tolerance for volatility. I think for someone who is m looking to make a six-month investment, I would say be cautious because I think that there is still um, uh, going to be 
a lot of volatility uh, coming from, you know, from the center, which is the United States. But for, uh, for investors looking for a longer term, taking a longer term perspective, I think that the improvement of valuations uh, that has accompanied the sell-off provides a good entry point. You know, if you're one of the investors that uh, has one of these short green bars um, and is low relative to the target allocation that you want um, for your portfolios in, in emerging market fixed income.